Welcome to Prime Cut, Default Prime's weekly video game news roundup. I'm your host as usual, Steven Snakey Galenzi, and on this week's episode, we're going to be talking about how the Pyramid Head rape scene from Silent Hill 2 has been what some are calling censored from the HD collection recently released. Also, we got news on how Bioware is somewhat folding on the Mass Effect 3 ending controversy. In other news, we're also going to be talking about Persona 4 coming to a theater near you as long as you live in Japan. And lastly, we have news on the price for Street Fighter Cross Tekken's character DLC. Without further ado, let's get right into this week's episode. One of the arguably iconic scenes from Silent Hill 2 involves the Pyramid Head and some mannequins doing what many have considered as raping those mannequins. Now that the HD collection has been released, people with really good memories, I mean really good memories, have noticed that the previously mentioned scene was in their eyes censored and some are really raising cane about it. So let's take a look at the HD in the original scene. Now, as you can see, the HD version is edited down, so the scene isn't as long. Also, by doing so, the scene skips around a whole lot and it loses kind of its flow. So, really, the scene is still there. It still shows what's happening, just it's not as long as it used to be. Now, this isn't the first issue involving this HD remake either. There's also the fact that Konami wasn't for quite a while willing to pay the original voice actors royalty for reusing their voices and or mocap. Certain very vocal Mass Effect 3 fans, your voices have been heard, Bioware is heeding your cries, and is currently working on to fix the ending. The news was posted on Bioware's blog earlier this week, and reveals that the details will be coming out in April, which really isn't all too far away. Now for those that haven't been keeping up with this issue, several people online have been furious with Mass Effect 3's ending, due to it not involving the player's choice, not explaining anything that happens or went on, and all the endings in the game are more or less exactly the same. And right now, the question I and others are asking is, will this send ugly precedent for games down the road? Where if a certain group of people don't like one aspect of a game, all they gotta do is yell loud enough to change it. This has been happening with other games with characters getting a new look such as Infamous 2 and even the new Devil May Cry. And does this all mean that games don't have any artistic interpretation where it's only our way that matters and not the developers? But anyways, now that this is all being fixed, everybody can stop hyperventilating for a while. At least till April where, if I'm going to be correct, this new ending or even epilogue will probably be DLC that you will have to pay for. As you know, they did end the game telling you about upcoming DLC that you may want to check out. So you know, perhaps all of this was actually planned from the start. Anyways, Bioware, I think the big question everyone's asking right now is, will you play Paragon with a free update to fix this ending, or go Renegade and make people pay for it and risk making them angrier? Planned upcoming DLC expansion, Exalted March, is now nothing more than just memories in the past, as the DLC has just been cancelled. The reasoning behind it is due to a focus on the future of the Dragon Age franchise, which apparently doesn't include this DLC. Or does it? Now this was announced by Mark Dara on his Twitter, with this being said, we did have plans for an expansion pack to Dragon Age 2, but other Dragon Age opportunities came up. There were even shirts. It was called Exalted March. Perhaps this simply means that the DLC will come out later down the road and feature more content in a new title. You know, maybe call it Exalted June. Platinum Games might currently be working on Metal Gear Rising, but they're also working on another game called Anarchy Reigns, which is an online action game featuring some previous characters by Platinum Games, such as a few from Mad World. 
New to the foray is one of our favorite Sarah Palin lookalikes, Bayonetta. And considering that Mad World is having from its game appearing, perhaps we can also see or play as Jean and Rodan. We still got some time to find out for sure, as Anarchy Reign comes out on July 3rd. A it's a new week, and that means it's time for a new heavy hitter from Bioshock and Infinite. And this time, child, it's the Boys of Silence, all. which kind of sounds like a band name. Of the heavy hitters, the Boys of Silence is the only one revealed so far that wears something over their face. It is also one that the player doesn't need to fight. See, the Boys of Silence are boys that are blind, but have impressive hearing so you can simply sneak past them as long as you're very, very quiet. If they do notice you or you decide to attack them, they have the ability to call for backup. So if you do go on the offensive or a herd, it's probably a wiser choice to take them out real quickly. And of course, next week there'll be another heavy hitter, and I can't wait to see what it'll be. I've never really thought that a video game would be a play that people could see on the stage. Then again, imagining a video game as a movie is sometimes a hard thought too, thanks to people like Uwe Boll. Then again, I've heard that the Phoenix Wright movie in Japan was pretty good, so maybe there is hope. But back to the topic, Persona 4 is coming to a theater near you, as long as you live in Japan. The play is being called Persona 4 Visual Live, which I must admit is a pretty stupid name. Keeping true to the Source game, before each performance, People can put in names for the protagonist, and each play will have a different name for said character. As I am a fan of the theater, and have been in a few local plays, that all seems like an interesting idea. Now the question is, what other games out there could be turned into a play in the lovely theater? Space Channel 5 the musical? Halo the comedy? Or, I know, Call of Duty the love opera? Go ahead and list your ideas down below. Originally, Sonic 4 was planned to at least be three episodes, but it's been recently revealed that that will no longer be the case. The Sonic 4 series will be ending with the upcoming episode, Sonic 4 Episode 2, which will be including Tails this time around in a similar fashion to how Sonic 2 included him, as well as Metal Sonic from Sonic CD. Not to be confused with Mecha Sonic from Sonic 2. Now, it isn't known for sure why Sega is deciding to end the series with Episode 2. It's believed this could be due to the reception of Episode 1, which received mixed reviews, and several fans didn't like the feel and weight associated with Sonic that time around. However, if Sonic Generations is anything to go off of, they appear to have fixed that issue, so it does seem that that shouldn't be the case anymore. Kickstarter sure is becoming a great place for known video game designers to help make their labor of love a reality. First, it was Double Fine creating a new point-and-click game, and now it's time to return to the Wastelands. Now, for those that haven't heard of Wastelands, you know, such as myself, due to me being born in the early 90s, it is called the first post-apocalyptic RPG. And in fact, it's the precursor to Fallout. See, the guys behind Wastelands lost the rights to the name for a while, so they couldn't create Wastelands 2, and that's when they came up with Increated Fallout. Now, the crew have already passed their original asking price of $900,000, and at the time of this recording, are almost at $1.5 million. So if you're a fan of the original Wastelands, or even the early Fallouts, then consider checking out this Kickstarter. We've provided the link to it down below. Super Meat Boy has been considered by many one of the hardest but most rewarding platformer games out there. Also, it's been critically acclaimed. Announced via Twitter, we now know that Super Meat Boy will be coming to iOS, but we're quickly informed that this won't simply be a port. The game will be remade and will be 100% new. Not to question Team Meat, I wouldn't do that for sure because I know nothing about making games, but I do have to wonder. How will the smooth and tight controls transfer to the iOS version? In other Macmillan news, we also now know that the expansion to the Bindings of Isaac, Wrath of the Lamb, will be coming out later this spring for the low, low price of $3. For those unaware, this expansion will include new bosses, stages, and items to make your character stronger. If you don't own the Bindings of Isaac yet, you know, you 
you really should go and get it now. It's not too expensive and it's really fun. The recently released in Japan only because dating sims don't do well here in America or anywhere else, 3DS game New Love Plus has been having some issues. There's been reports of various bugs in the game, ranging from the game freezing to certain day events like the recent White Day, which is a holiday celebrated in certain Asian countries, not even happening. Apparently due to all these issues, Konami is telling stores to not sell the game or accept end or sell used copies of the game. We have no idea how long Konami will keep telling stores to deny sales of the game. Perhaps till they fix the problem with the game and can ship a new version of the game out. But who knows. Free to play MMORPGs are becoming more and more popular nowadays, with two main models being pushed. There is the freemium model, which features you getting certain extras for choosing to pay X amount a month, or the microtransaction type. Aeon's upcoming transition to free to play will feature the latter, which they call the customizable user bundling experience, which several users have already been criticizing the system as, apparently, the stronger and better weapons and armor will be through this service only, which of course isn't fair when a low level player can get powerful equipment due to them wanting to pay real world money. This has always been the issue with these microtransaction type of games that feature PvP, which Aeon does feature. It is something that players will have to keep their eyes on when this update happens on April 11th. I never knew that there was a genre of rock called Zombie Rock, but that is probably why I'm not the biggest person in the music scene. In the latest Lollipop Chainsaw trailer, we get to hear some of the zombie rock as well as to finally get a look at the guys that they call the bosses. There's Zed the typical punk rocker, also voiced by Jimmy Urin, lead singer of the band Mindless Self-Indulgence. There's also Vic, an undead viking with influence from metal. Mariska, a stoner zombie chick who digs psychedelic rock. And finally, there's Josie, the funk lover with attacks that seem similar to certain 8-bit video games out there. All I can say is that the more I see of this game, the more I want it now. The last time we showed you a trailer for Dead or Alive, it featured a guest appearance from an iconic Virtual Fighter character. This time around, it's showcasing Ayami and Hitomi going against each other, as well as some nice explosions here and there. Oh, and least I forget, there was also a car. Yeah, Hitomi probably isn't going to be getting up from that for quite a bit. Hey, do you remember previously when we told you about the whole DLC snafu with Street Fighter Cross Tekken? You know, the whole fact that the supposedly Vita exclusive characters are actually already on the disc for the console games? Well, some sneaky gamers have gone and modded the game so that they can actually play with those hidden characters on the disc that they bought which has also resulted in Capcom hunting down those people and banning them from Xbox Live or PSN. Now what is making all this even more ridiculous is that to unlock all these characters, you'll have to pay $20. This means if you happen to have bought the game new for $60 and then buy the character pack as you want those extra characters, you'll be out $80. Compare that to the PS Vita game which will likely only cost you $40. So Capcom doesn't appear to be saving face over the whole has on disc DLC stuff. But with that last piece of information, it brings us to the end of this week's broadcast. And before we leave, I want to mention that this coming Monday, we'll be having a new video series starting here at Default Prime called Indie Game Highlight, which will be a video series meant to show off indie games that are free or on the cheap that you probably haven't heard of before. So subscribe to us here to be up to date on when that comes out, as well as our other videos. And as I always say, till next time gamers. <laughs>